Hey there everyone, welcome to a complete guide for all the weapon changes taking place on August 28th. I'll be going over where all your favorite weapons are moving, and what types are becoming special, which ones are staying in the power slot, and so on. So let's get to it. On August 28th, the new update will be deployed. This is going to introduce the new weapon slot changes where you can choose to have a loadout like Destiny 1, a loadout like Destiny 2, or mix it up and go wild with loadouts like 3 shotguns. Bungie is freeing up the slots to allow the best of both worlds when it comes to customization and playing how you want. I for one cannot wait to use a sniper or shotgun in my special slot again. So what weapons are moving where and how is this all going to work? Well I got you covered. I'm going to keep it simple and not overcomplicate things. Things. All you need to worry about is what weapons will be taking what kind of ammo, and that's really the only thing you need to know. Which weapons are going to take white bricks, which ones are going to take green bricks, and which ones are going to take purple bricks. Starting off with primary weapons. These are the weapons that will take white ammo bricks, aka kinetic ammo, hand cannons, auto rifles, scout rifles, submachine guns, sidearms, pulse rifles, bows, mostly legendary but this picture was all that I could get, and fighting lion. So now we're on to special weapons. These are weapons that take green ammo bricks or energy ammo. Shotguns, sniper rifles, fusion rifles, breech loaded grenade launchers, trace rifles, a small selection of exotic bows, merciless, telesto, and the prospector. Now for power weapons. These are the ones that take purple ammo bricks or heavy ammo. Drum loaded grenade launchers, which are like play of the game. Rocket launchers, swords, linear fusion rifles, the colony, sleeper simulant, Tractor Cannon, Darcy, Whisper of the Worm, Legend of Acrius, and Borealis. Any of those weapon classes or weapons I just mentioned will not be able to change slots. They will always stay in the heavy slot and always take purple ammo. Now there are some specific power weapons that are moving to the kinetic slot. Those are Balagant, Hawthorne's Field Forged Shotgun, Perfect Paradox, Silicon Neuroma, Alone is a God, Shepherd's Watch, and the Frigid Jackal. For a quick summary so far, Primary weapons such as hand cannons, auto rifles, and pulse rifles will take white ammo bricks, but they can be found in the first or second slots. Special weapons will always take green ammo, but things like snipers and shotguns and breech loaded grenade launchers can go into the first or second slot. And power weapons will always be locked to the power slot. Easy enough, right? Let's say you're running two special weapons. This could be two shotguns or two auto rifles that both take primary ammo, one in the first slot and one in the secondary slot. What happens to the ammo if both weapons take the same kind? Well, the ammo you collect will be split between both weapons. If you run two guns that take white ammo or kinetic ammo, the white ammo bricks will be split between the weapons when you pick it up. So the first weapon will get half and the second weapon will get half. It is said that white ammo bricks drop more common to keep primary weapons always ready for combat. So judging by the way the ammo works in this new weapon slot system, it seems like the most efficient loadout will be choosing one gun of each different ammo type. Using two weapons of the same ammo type is going to mean you have a little less ammo to play with. If you want to be risky and run something like three shotguns, you could potentially pack some more power but will also be limited on ammo. The Escalation Protocol Shotgun and Sniper are both being locked to solar damage, so regardless of what element you have on it now or try to put on these two weapons, they will be reverted back to solar damage when the update hits. That's all I have on weapon slots, but another important topic is our current weapons. How will they be affected when year 2 arrives and what elements should you mod them? Recently we've been getting conflicting reports on whether year 1 weapons will be able to accept year 2 mods. Originally we were told yes they can, but just earlier today Josh Hamrick on Twitter replied to the question with a simple no. Year 1 weapons will not take new mods. So there you go. There is really no reason to hang on to any of your year 1 weapons other than for sentimental value. Don't get me wrong, things like Midnight Q and other great guns will still be somewhat viable in year 2, but year 2 weapons will have a huge advantage with their ability to both take year 2 mods and receive random rolls. With more perks, additional mod bonuses, and the ability to level them up to a masterwork level of 10, year 2 weapons will be the only thing you'll want to use after a few weeks or even possibly days of Forsaken. It was confirmed year 1 weapons, if they are masterworked already, will become level 5 masterworks, and will be capped there forever. The level of masterwork is tied to the bonus stat directly, so if you have leveled up a gun to level 10 masterwork, then the bonus stat is increased by a full 10 
10%. While year one weapons won't be able to receive new mods, year one armor will. So if you really like a gear set or a piece of gear you earned, you can attach the new year two mods to it, although you won't have the ability to get randomly rolled perks like year two armor will. So you'll still be at a bit of a disadvantage. You can also level up year two armor to a masterwork level of 10, which is the way you'll get increased mobility, recovery, and resilience. Now what about the elements of your current weapons? What should you change each weapon to, or should you even change them at all? Well, there's actually a really handy post on Reddit that lists all of the current default weapon elements. Keep in mind this list is not 100% confirmed and was found through the API, so it's subject to change, but this post is 17 days old and there is still no comment about it, leaving us to assume this is the final list. Take a look at the list and whichever weapons you have, make them the opposite of what it says they are on the list. That way you have a different element from what's being stored in the collection, so when you go to retrieve a gun from the collections, you'll be pulling out a different version than you already have. I did this on a few guns, but didn't go too crazy because again, year two weapons will really outshine year one stuff. Once you're done, dismantle the rest of your elemental mods and all of your legendary mods that you have, as Bungie confirmed it is safe to delete everything. In the recent This Week at Bungie, it was said the quantity of items you receive when you dismantle things now will stay the same. So since deleting a legendary mod now gives one mod component, it will stay that way in year two. Unless you want to spend Forsaken deleting your mods, I would get all of it out of the way right now. Check in the description for the link to that post on Reddit. Essentially, it's safe to delete everything now. Weapons, armor, mods, shaders, everything. All of the following will be available from collections assuming you've collected them starting on the 4th. All year 1 weapons, all year 1 armor, all ships, sparrows, and ghost shells, all shaders, and all emblems. I wanted to offer some tips for Forsaken that I covered in some other videos but if you missed them I'll go over them here quickly. Stack up on mod components. These will be really useful in Forsaken for buying weapon and armor mods. Delete all of your legendary mods and turn in rares for more legendaries. Collect planetary materials. These are going to be completely replacing planetary tokens, so anywhere you got tokens previously, you'll now get materials. They'll be used to infuse and upgrade gear, so they're going to be really important. You can purchase Zavala's Authority ship for some tokens and legendary shards, and each ship gives you 5,000 glimmer. Alternatively, you can also purchase Shax's Exotic Ghost for some tokens and shards, or the Trials Flawless Exotic Ghost, which is a lot cheaper than the previous two, for a bunch of fast glimmer. I stocked up on a ton of those ships so that when Forsaken releases, I have easy access to glimmer in case I run out. If you want a little head start in Forsaken, you can pick up a bunch of bounties, and when you complete them, they don't expire. Hopefully that means you can use these completely completed bounties for extra XP right out of the gate when Forsaken launches. You should also buy a few fireteam medallions to speed up your XP gains. Masterwork cores, mod components, glimmer, planetary materials, and legendary shards are going to be the currencies and materials you need most in Forsaken. So stock up on all of those big time. And that about does it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful, and if it was, please let me know. I'm always trying to improve the quality of these videos, and if you're a visual learner like me, it can be really helpful to see these weapon changes on the screen instead of reading them via a huge paragraph of text. Thank you all very much for watching.